Vicky here and welcome to this week's edition of The Bond Room Unlocked. I'll be inviting you to turn the key with me on my 26 year old Bond collection and the posters of Bond Part 1. Hi, this is Dan from SpyMovieNavigator.com. My favourite poster is the Dr. No poster by Mitchell Hooks. The horizontal yellow background, it's a British quad poster which shows the tuxedoed Bond as a cool and soon-to-be iconic figure with his gun and cigarette and four women who pose in, the pre in predominantly a power position. Honey Ryder, Miss Taro, Sylvia, Sylvia Trench, and Annabelle Chung, the photographer. It really shows what Bond will be about. Cool, sophisticated, tough, and that sex and beautiful women will play a large part in what will come. And I love how Dr. No is half off the poster to the left, indicating that Bond is the hero here and takes center stage, even on the poster. Not Dr. No. As one of our first intros to Bond, this poster sets us up for decades to come. Thanks to my good friend Dan Silvestri there for kicking off the episode with his favourite poster from Dr No. I have this poster myself in canvas form and it's a very simple poster for me yet it has understated coolness. It's raw, it's sexy and even though it has this bold use of colours it's the grey shadowy figure of Dr No in the left hand corner that really draws me in into the mysteries of the film. The alternate poster, which I also like, is bold and colourful in another way. Each character is coloured in, yet juxtaposed against the monotone scenes from the film across the bottom. It's the first James Bond film adventure, and it has a first-rate film poster to boot. OK, so let's move on to 2006 with Mark. Over to you, Mark. Hello, everyone at the Bond Room Unlocked. This is Mark C C Coggins. Um, I'm here to talk about my favourite teaser poster. It's the 2006 Casino Royale with Daniel Craig's at the table with the poker chips and his warfare. And for what I think this is the very best teaser poster we've had in a long time. I do kind of wish that they still have the old style, but you can't have everything. Um, the way the, for me, the poster, I think, is that... Uh, is that... It looks very mysterious. You don't know what to expect. And Daniel Craig just looks so cool in that poster. That's why it's my all time favourite. Thank you very much. It's an interesting choice that Mark has picked. And for me, it's better than some of the Craig posters of his later films. They were designed by Vox and Associates. And these teasers were in place to give us our first glimpse of a new Bond. I like how he's partly in shadow, solidifying that the young double O agent is emerging from the darkness to take on his first mission, yet still having those key elements that we associate with Bond. The Tux, the Walther PPK, and Poker. My favourite Bond poster is from the 1974 underrated thriller, The Man with the Golden Gun. When the film was released, I bought this magazine, which rather neatly folds out into the film poster. But just what makes this poster so special? The poster depicts some of the key scenes from the movie. In the bottom left hand corner, there's an obligatory explosion towards the end of the film. And I'm here featuring a bit of artistic license as I think there's only one person in the film uh, in the actual control room, where we see quite a lot more here. Here's one of the schoolgirls who rescues Bond from the karate school, proving that even in 1974, the filmmakers didn't see Bond as a misogynist dinosaur. And in the top left-hand corner, we can see the car jump, which controversially used a comic slide whistle effect on the soundtrack. Also, the poster depicts the key characters. Of course, in the middle, there is Sir Rog looking very debonair and suave. On the right-hand side, Andrea is pointing towards Bond, as if he's difficult to see, given that he's twice the size of anybody else in this poster. 
and next to Andrea is Nicknack, Tabasco. On the left hand side we can see Scaramanga with his powerful weapon and here is Mary Goodnight. But what is Mary actually doing here? Is it a deleted scene in which she swats a fly? Or maybe she's doing some sort of deadly seduction dance? Answers on a postcard please. So this is my favourite poster, The Man with the Golden Gun. And of course, those who know me will know that the real, real reason that it's my favourite poster is that it features an illustration of Maud Adams in a bikini. Thanks, Chris. Now, what I like about this poster is how everything is focusing in on our man Bond. Scaramanga's gun, Andrea Anders, Nick Knack, the energy complex... Yet Good Night and the Karate School are blocking the gun. Now remember, these were allies of Bond's in the film. I love Robert McGuinness's designs for these Bond posters. They're so busy, yet so captivating. Okay, so the item I want to share with you from the Bond Room Unlocked today is the official James Bond 007 movie poster book, which covers 25 years of James Bond films from Dr No up to the latest blockbuster at that time, which was The Living Daylights from 1987. This is such a brilliant book. It's visually captivating and it is just so huge. And if I can just open it up and show you, we've got You Only Live Twice, the page on the right hand side has the poster in, in all its glory. And then on the left hand side we have a little bit about the poster and also a dossier of the film. And it's so visual this book, it's so big. We have Live and Let Die, look at the colours, look how brilliant it is. Wow, I just really wish they would make another book like this now. And one thing that struck me is you would never get it for £4.95 now. It's just amazing. I can't speak highly enough about this book that was published by Hamlin. So, uh, has anybody else got this book? Hello, my name's Neil and this is my favourite Bond film poster. I've gone with the teaser poster for Goldeneye. Um, the one with the gun pointing straight at you. Um, this was banned because the gun is pointing straight at you. Um, I like it because it's simple, it's elegant. It's got a little homage to the... Uh, gun barrel opening of every film in it and also I think if you were to cover that up the 007 you would still know it's a Bond poster and that is why it's my favourite I did have a copy of this up until recently but it got lost when we moved house now I feel Neil's pain here I actually love this poster it is my favourite and it's a world away from the posters of the 70s and 80s. I had this poster on the back of my bedroom door back in the days when I didn't know any better and my cat at the time put its paws up the door and dragged his claws down. <sighs> anyway, essentially, this poster was a teaser of another Golden Eye poster that was banned at the time of release. US Censors MPAA ordered that the image be changed to 007 be firing upwards rather than at the viewer, hence the poster. Okay, so let's move from 1995 and go out of this world, 1979. How do you do? Welcome to my Moonraker collection, or rather my favourite poster, my favourite James Bond poster, and it's this one, it's the release poster from 1979. Now first of all, you've got, you've got the excitement of the title, um, Albert R. Broccoli presents Roger Moore as James Bond in Ian Fleming's Moonraker. Okay, it's not quite Ian Fleming's Moonraker. And space shuttles weren't out when he was there, but they were out in 1979. And there's three of them on here, and they look fantastic. What you've also got on here is the wonderful Drax women, or Drax girls, or silhouettes, whatever you want to call them. Um, we all already know uh, about some of them. We talked about these three, or rather, she might not exist. 
but the ones over here, you've got the lovely Erka Buchenko, whose birthday it was last week, and uh, Francoise Nick Nikkeis, I think her name is. Um, this one here, another one who doesn't exist. You can tell that, it's not really a real face there. But the poster itself um, was to sort of show a little bit the sort of Star Wars, not a little bit, a lot of the Star Wars-ness of, of Moonraker. You've got all the, uh, the people who made it actually in the space station itself. Now Bond himself here, he's dressed up, he's got the Union Jack on the, on the, on the shoulder, like we said about before. Can't see the crew patch on that one, the one from Superman, or Superman 2, um, but what else? Um, he himself, they, uh, as I said before, there was a photo shoot um, where they weren't happy with the previous poster that was by Love Me, and so they, they posed for a couple of days and got Bond in. And uh, I just so happen to have here my latest Bride and Joy. This is the teaser poster, in fact, it's one of the original teaser posters from 1978. You see the one? We've got Roger Moore here, and you can actually see the patch on this one. Um, not quite as good as the one behind me, but I still love this one and I love the fact that this is original. And to all the viewers, Bond room unlocked. Bid you farewell. Thanks, Philip. Another Moonraker poster that I like shows Bond kitted out with a bizarrely scantily dressed Holly Goodhead as she dresses conservatively in the film. And um, you have Drax's space station in graphic form. It's metallic arms depicting three key scenes from the film. The cable car fight, the infamous Bondola and of course the speedboat hang glider. It truly is out of this world. Hello, Amalan here. So if I was to choose my favourite Bond movie poster, it would have to be The World Is Not Enough. It's unique because it has three different posters. The first one is a teaser poster, which is essentially a golden, fiery silhouette of a woman with a black shadowed silhouette of Bond right uh, beside it. I think that works really well as a teaser poster, not just for The World Is Not Enough, but for Bond in general. One of the main posters of The World Is Not Enough, which I really like, is the one with a dark background with Bond in the suit and Elektra and Christmas Jones by the side of him. And as well as that, you've got this really great design of a tilted circle with scenes from the movie in segments of the circle, as well as a shadow of Renard's face in the corner as well. I think that's a brilliant design and one that really catches the eye of someone who loves Bond and action movies in general. Another common poster, which I also think is a great poster, although not as much as the one I described before, is the one with Bond holding the gun more in the background, a bit more enlarged, while you have the figures of Christmas and Electra beside each other, and again, a more shadowy face of Renard in the corner. I think that's also a great poster, but it's more on a light her background, but I feel the darker background in the former poster works better. I'd like to thank Vicky for having me on the show again and stay safe and take good care of yourselves. For me, it is so interesting to see and hear all the different thoughts on these posters from different eras. How different we all are, but we all share the same love for the same super spy. Now, Amalan's breakdown of all the posters from the 1999 film The World Is Not Enough shows the exceptional photography of Nigel Perry, Keith Hampshire and Jay Maidment with the help of design director Brian Bison. Now, I particularly like this poster and how Bond and Christmas Jones are standing together as allies, but Electra King is facing outwards. 
a subtle hint at her betrayal, perhaps? Now the purpose of this channel is to take the items in this Bond room and relate them to the films that we know and love. If you have enjoyed part one of this Bond poster episode, then give it an MI6 stamp of approval and click on the notifications below. Why not subscribe so you don't miss part two in the future, whereby we'll be showcasing even more posters. Now you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram and catch me occasionally co-hosting with Tom Pizzato and Dan Silvestri on spymovienavigator.com cracking the code of spy movies. I'd like to thank Dan, Mark, Chris, Neil, Philip and Amalan for sharing their favourite posters with us today and I'd like to thank you for joining me. Keep bonding and I'll see you next time at the Bond Room Unlocked.